my man. We'll go already. Yeah, man. Yeah, jamming out some music and uh, yeah, thought we might as well have a yarn because uh, you know I was going to give you a ring anyway and just talk some shit with you. And um, I figured uh, our conversations aren't much different to what we have on the podcast, so I thought I'd just uh, give you a bow and have a yak with you. Yeah, man. And I'm so professional. I'm still setting my shit up from. Uh, so I'm in a spare room, really, aren't? But mate, stay. Oh, you're freezing up on us, man. Reset the modem or something. It was, um, you know, it was really crappy the other week. The yeah. couple of pods we did, I kept freezing. Yeah, man. When reset the uh, reset the modem and it all came sweet for a bit. But for for those that didn't realise how much time we lost, I just managed to come up with "We're back again, we're back again." Two oh two one one forty on the bar. We're back on track again. We're back again. So um, it was quite some time you were away, but um, we're back again. Um, you do that too. You pull out old school raps, and the young people think you're freestyling. Oh no, there was. I kind of stole the first part off uh, Public Enemy, um, but other than that, I just went, pulled it apart, put something together. How is life down in the uh, sunny Dunedin? Oh well, it was sunny today. Bit of a mixed nice bag, one. you know, uh, for me personally, anyway. But uh, day was great today. Yep. Um, yeah, beautiful yeah. sunny day. It's a high of 13 degrees, I think it was. As soon as the sun went down, it got pretty cold. So, <laughs> you know. so um, the question I asked myself today was, um, you know, with bodybuilding and the lack of balance and that that we have, is how do you know if you're living a, a full life? And the first thing that came into my head, so I thought, I'm going to make up 10 things that allow you to determine whether you're living a full life. And my first one that came onto my list was, um, you knew you were living a full life if you'd been in handcuffs before. <laughs> and uh, I thought it kind of could kind of go both ways. And I said, said it to my friend and she said, um, does the bedroom count? And I said, uh, well, if you want to Russian move to handcuff you to the bed and, and make you call your bad auntie, then that's entirely up to you. But uh, And she said, that sounds like you. And I said, I want my lawyer. <laughs> so uh, that's my first thing. So if you haven't been in handcuffs, you should get in handcuffs at some stage, however you choose to. Um, and I expect that, Mike, you know, given, uh, you know, your partner's job, you probably have had to play with the handcuffs before. So uh, we'll, we'll uh, probably Do leave it there. The Fifth Amendment. Do the Fifth <laughs> Amendment in New Zealand. Yeah. Oh, look, just, just <clears throat> run with it, bro. Um, I have had the phrase... Uh, because of your relative size, so I feel it necessary to restrain you. Oh, the, uh, that came that, that came off your tongue way too quickly, bro. Oh, well, and then the, um, the uh, what, what do you call it? The supervising officer said, "No, nah, look, I think um, I think we're okay here." And they were okay. It was all fine. <laughs> as long as you do get the uh, get the get the pepper spray, um, that that that's kind of going a step far. But I thought that you needed to come up with the second one, so I'll leave that with you. And uh, next time we chat, you can tell us uh, rule number two for knowing whether you're living a, a fulfilling life. Oh, fulfilling is different than full life. Oh, no, you know, I know. My well, life is pretty full, mate. My life's pretty full. <laughs> hey, all good, man. All good. Hey, um, I heard something on the radio today. I, was, I, I bought a new car, so um, not not uh, as exciting as the car I just sold, unfortunately, but um, I, I bought a car just That's to run around. a lot around. cheaper to run, I imagine. <sighs> Absolutely. Uh, I drove from town back out to the beach and back and I didn't notice the needle even move. And I know that in my in my V8 that I was running around in, um, that was probably a $30 run, you know, um, at least. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to enjoy being very thrifty with my economy. Anyway, it's got a stereo in it and it was locked on on the rock and, and I don't generally listen to the radio, but it was really interesting. Uh, one of their DJs... Um, did a whole bunch of press ups and um, on, on I think it was Sunday night or something, and he's ended up in hospital because he um, he couldn't move his arms or his upper body, and um, he was pissing black, you know. And it turns out there is a medical condition called uh, rhabdo, and I wrote it down. Yeah, sorry, rhabdo my yeah. where um, you know if you hit a whole bunch of exercise that you're not used to and your muscle cells lies their contents essentially 
and can um, overload the kidneys and things. And it can be can be pretty serious. And obviously things like your creatinine kinase uh, enzymes are just through the roof. So this poor guy's in hospital. So I uh, hope he uh, heals think, up again um, as well. I've heard of that. I think runners yeah. can get that from their feet, eh? From, uh, you know, just too much pounding. It just, I think it breaks down the red blood cells. My question was, could you do a workout hard enough to induce that to yourself? You know, and everyone talks about, you know, you don't train hard enough or so-and-so is the hardest trainer, but surely if you train to, to such a level that your body just wasn't used to it, I think that the kind of statement that I, that I read that went with it was that um, it's where you to do a type of exercise you're not used to. So perhaps yeah. if they got someone like me and made me fucking run around the paddock five, six times as fast as I could, I'd probably end up spewing up and ending up in hospital in the same condition. But um, that was my first thought. It'd have to be something. We're pretty well conditioned to the, the types of things we do and, and, and a fair variety, you know, like a, a big different, a, a big range of volume and a big range of rep ranges and loads, but sort of, I guess, a narrow range of uh, activity types. Yes, yes. Uh, so so the, our, our limitations on cardio would be exposed far more easily than our uh, limitations in the gym. So, Although when I was you know, in between sort of during my retirement, when I was playing a bit of rugby and I was, I was running a bit, I used to do, you know, when I was living in Queenstown, I'd, I'd run around Lake Hayes about eight and a half Ks and I'd sort of do it sort of 40, 42 minutes, something like that. It's about, about five minute Ks, which isn't too bad. I mean, I'm yeah. relatively tall, but um, I used to wear my heart rate monitor. And at the time, I was uh, sort of 40 years old, and so my, my predicted heart rate max was 180. Um, but I'd be sitting on 178 to 185 for about the last 10 minutes of it. And I'm kind of going, yeah, look, if I drop dead of a heart attack, I don't think anybody's going to be too surprised. <laughs> you, imagine, you imagine the inquest, they'd look at your, uh, at your Fitbit and uh, your heart rate monitor and say the guy was mad. He was running at speed at heart rates that were over his predicted max for his age. And uh, I guess it must tell you something about your mentality because I, I kind of feel that most of us would sort of start getting up to that level and go, oh, this isn't good. I've got to back off a bit here, but you uh, managed to sort of keep maintaining that. I was always fascinated by the physiology behind it, you know, what was going on in the body. And and I figure from the years of, of weight training, it gave me a pretty good tolerance to lactic acid. Because theoretically, once you're over about 90% of your, or even lower, probably 80% of your max heart rate, you start generating lactic acid. And when you're up near that sort of 95%, you generate it pretty fast. Mm. And so theoretically, sort of, you know, two to three minutes of that lactic acid system, and it should be pretty much toast. But they're always going for sort of 10 minutes. So either the age predicted max was quite wrong, and that's happened. I had a, a colleague up there who was a, there's a little whippet of a guy about you know 65 kilos and he was a, a road cyclist. He used to do repeats up and down Coronet Peak and he was about the same age as me and he'd have his heart rate up over 200. So, you know, I guess well, it's... Yeah, the, um, the, the grinders on the um, Merrick's Cup boats, heart rates, I, I swear, I, you know, guys were sitting up around 210 in there, um, yeah. which is, you know, pretty pretty nutty for, for those, those periods of time. But, yeah, it's interesting, like, you know... I guess if you took someone who was completely new to the gym and tried to put them through, you know, your style of workout, your volume, and and they would were mentally hard enough to push themselves to that high capacity and 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 hit that real high intensity, they potentially could put themselves in uh, in A and E like that. Yeah. Interesting yeah. times. Interesting times. Hey, hey um, you sorry, you have a list of things to go through, right? Yeah, I just found yeah, a few things. Got a I was interested. Hey, yeah, I got a, I got one. I want to throw in there just before we get too, uh, well, too carried away. Mm. I've uh, the the podcast. You know, like we put the I put the audio up. Yep. So you usually try, you know, sort of uh, convert it to audio to MP3 and then pop it up. You know, sort of the same day or the next day. And um, it's got some really good analytics through the podcast server that I use. Yep. And we've got a couple of listeners uh, from the US. And they download gets a couple of downloads from the US every episode we put up so i wanted to make a shout out to our us listeners and uh you know if you want to get in contact with it through the instagram we'd love to have a chat and find out what, what you think of the of the of the show and you know why the hell you're downloading it what you get out of it so uh shout out to you guys or girls or whoever it is that's downloading it that's really cool man i, I kind of uh you know, like we, we did this because we, you know, just love bodybuilding, love talking about the sport and, and all sorts of stuff as well outside of bodybuilding. But um, 
to think that you're kind of getting a little bit of reach in in places you've never been is is pretty cool. It's, it's a nice yeah. little uh, yeah. So I guess I hope we're entertaining, if nothing else, and uh, we do uh, try to be somewhat educating at the same time. Uh, when we have uh, when we have guests on, you kind of you know you know if you've got Kevin Manuel on, that the CrossFitters are going to kind of. Uh, come along and, and, and sort of friends of his and you'll put up through his Instagram page and ours and, and so you kind of think those ones get a bit and uh, usually the show reviews get quite a bit they're, they're not as good for the audio but um, you know so it's when interesting it's I, find it, I find it amazing though that you know like our show one's obviously really popular I guess people like seeing their friends they like seeing themselves it probably feels pretty cool to get a mention if you had something special you brought really good condition and you know you have a bunch of guys talking about your condition and um giving you credit for that it must be quite nice um but we've also had some really amazing podcasts um just about about all sorts of things and, and a lot of them are starting to delve into some of that the psychology behind high performance and, and starting to move into that kind of area which which I really enjoy. And I know that uh, you love the psychology side of it. Um, yeah. And I've always had a, a thing for high performance and, and um, you know, so, so some of those conversations have been pretty cool. So awesome. Yeah, I, I, I always look at the ones, I, cause I mean, I, I guess I only get to look at the analytics for the, for the audio. Um, I don't know what analytics you get for the, um, YouTube, but um, I spend I'm, all day. I, I spend my entire day on the analytics, Mike. I tell you, <laughs> oh, I know. Just like when, when it comes up, I just scroll down and it says, uh, for this episode, they had you know, say 27 downloads, you know, you had 15 from New Zealand, you know, eight from yeah. Australia, and usually it's you know, there's a there's about double um in New Zealand than there are from Australia. There's always two from the US, so shout yeah. out to you guys. Yeah. We've had Belgium, Germany, Denmark, Sweden, yeah. uh, sort of just the odd one here and there. So funny you know, though, like because one of the things that I do when I watch the overseas podcasts, the guys that live in places I've never been and live in cultures I don't understand are very patriotic and American. Some of them very, you know, um, you know, you've got the Italian American guys, and they 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 have a a real way, you know, about them and a real culture that they hold. Um, you know, uh, obviously, like Fuad and, and with his background and the guests that he's bringing on from the UK, and um, I sort of sit there and think, far out, it's really cool to watch these guys that are from all over the world, and we're all interested in the same thing. We all have the same conversations. We all enjoy doing the same stuff, and we just love getting to the gym and training and, and the whole. You know, we all probably reminisce a little bit about you know about the nineties and things like that. It's um, so pretty cool, pretty cool. One of the one of the interesting things Fuad said is that a lot of people message him and just start giving him shit, like like they feel like they're kind of because because the the guys on Bro Chat yeah. are just like their mates and they yeah. just talk shit just like their mates. They feel really over familiar with them yeah. and they'll just come straight and giving them shit about something. Yeah. I, I don't know you, dude. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know you as a person. Although interesting, uh, uh, guy, sister Nino, he kind of said, "Look, I I interact with all of them." As many of them as I can, I, I have a go at answering, and and it's really funny. Like I kind of, you know, like I've made a couple of comments on on particular people's posts when they put up something really good, or they put some really funny stuff up lately, and um, you know, I've commented and they've liked it, and it's like kind of cool that you know you can give some some cool feedback. I gave some feedback. They had Nathan Diasha, who um, everyone knows I like Nathan Diasha. I met him in 2016 at the Olympia. Great guy, so friendly. And was just really cool. Um, and uh, he was on the show, and I thought he added another dimension to the show. And, yeah, yeah. So I just I just gave that feedback and said, really cool seeing um, you know some of the guests you're bringing on because it, it, it it's really it's changing and it's growing and it's becoming even even better than what you know it has been. And and you know then I look at it from a business perspective and and Fuad's brands obviously moving into the UK now so he's picked up you know a couple of uh, new hostile athletes based out of the UK which is a great business move he's a very very clever man in that respect so um kudos to them but um you yeah, love that uh, love that Geordie accent that, that Nathan's got <laughs> pretty cool um, he? no, he's Liverpool isn't he he's Liverpool yeah, that's, man isn't he? That's, yeah. that's the Geordie yeah. area yeah I, um I watched a training video of his the other day. He was doing shoulders. And it was uh, actually while I was sort of on, you know, not feeling very well on the couch. And this mate of mine was there. And um, and he, he just watched it and goes, how do they keep going? What, doesn't the lactic acid? I said, 
I said, you just keep going. It hurts, but you just keep going. You just work through the pain. That's what we do. You know, it doesn't matter if it hurts. It only matters if you can't do it. So pain sort of becomes a little bit irrelevant, you know, and that's, um, you know, especially when it comes to something like legs. And when you're putting someone through a, I, I used to way back in the 90s when I was PTing at, at Les Mills, sort of became a bit legendary for my leg sessions. Mm. People would want to come and do a leg session with me. And a lot of it was a little bit of the psyching them up and going, look, we're about to do it. And I've worked them up so they're really warm and they're ready to go and kind of work out what was challenging for them. And, a, you know, a, a set that maybe they could do about 10 reps for on the leg press. Yep. And they're going, right, you're just going to keep going until I tell you to stop. But if you can't <laughs> lift, I'll lift for you. So don't think about whether you can do it. Bad about- deal, bro. Bad deal. I'm not signing up to that shit. That sounds terrific. And so, yeah, look, it was just, it was one set, but it kind of yeah. essentially, they learned what I learned that you can do a lot more than your body thinks it can. The pain is just the feeling. It's 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 kind of irrelevant when you've got a body. So I'd put them, you know, I'd put them through probably twenty reps, you know, and 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 they'd just keep going, going, and they'd just you know fall off the leg press. And but you know, once you've done a workout like that, yeah. every other workout becomes easy because chest isn't like chain. I had like a uh, very very similar. I had a very similar thing, Mike, back in the day. I, I used to train in the uh, Magpies rugby gym, so a lot of sort of uh, functional equipment, and I was training powerlifting and strongman at the time. I had um, three-time New Zealand strongest man, uh, Nick Hansen, was training with me, and we'd get a lot of people that say, can we come and have a train with you? And we had this thing that we did. We said, yeah, yeah sure, we're going to train legs. And they said, oh, what are we going to do? Oh, we won't squat today. We'll just do hack squats. Cool. And then the deal was that we warmed up, you know, typical sort of warm up. And then we loaded the entire um, hack squat with 10 kilo plates. And you had to go to fail, like actually physically fail and the boys help you up, then would drop a 10 off each side. And you had to go again until you cleared the machine. And I said to anyone, anyone who, who finishes that workout and gets through it and doesn't quit, I'm happy to train with, I'll train anything with you because you've earned the right, you know, not that I'm special, but that's the attitude that we had. And if you didn't have that attitude, you wouldn't fit in with our training crew. So um, I did that and I had a guy who hadn't done any weights really. And um, (laughs) he came and joined us and he fucking smashed it. He just kept going and kept going. And in the end, he fell on the floor. He was fucked. And that was the end of the workout. There was nothing else after that. The workout was done. And um, he, he, I said, are you coming back for the next session? He goes, yep. And he goes, oh, I just want to tell you, I, my, I've always had a goal. I want to compete in New Zealand's Strongest Man. So I ended up training this guy for New Zealand's Strongest Man and from someone that hadn't trained. And within a year, he competed in, in New Zealand's Strongest Man and did really well. He got really strong. And, uh, you, know, you, you know, if you couldn't get through that workout, you wouldn't have been able to achieve that goal. You know, so... Yeah. You think that potentially being untrained was an advantage because if you don't have a lot of strength, you fail earlier. But if you've done something else like a lot of running, you might have a, a sort of better muscular endurance rather than uh, rather than strength. Because you I know, honestly think that failed, entire, it's over. yeah, but that, that that entire workout was was purely mental, man. You know, like you've you've just got to switch off, suck up that pain. The fact that you feel like you're going to spew up or you're going to fall over or your knees are buckling, and you keep going. You know, it's uh, it's a different mentality, and I think you know everyone who's succeeded in bodybuilding and put on you know some really good size and created a really good physique knows exactly what that is because no one gets that physique by by accident. You know, you can have the best genetics in the world, you're not going to look like a bodybuilder unless you put in that time. You know, so unless you can think of someone that can prove that point wrong. <laughs> I'm sure there's someone out there, there's a lot of genetic freaks, but um, to actually truly look like a bodybuilder, you know, I think you, you have to do hard work. No well, they talk about, um, you know, Flex Wheeler not training very hard or say Phil Heath, you know, only really putting it on for the for the cameras. But look, you know, even though not training hard is, is relative, they still put the work in, you know. Yeah, look, I think that, you know, anyone like that, like, you know, your flex wheelers and, and, and Phil, if Phil trains, I don't know really enough about them. But, you know, I think um, anyone who's got that physique, even you and I who've got a pretty, you know, we train pretty bloody hard, I think we would still struggle with their workouts with, you know, with the volume that they perhaps do or whatever it might be. Um, because, you know, you don't go and just play around and cut out 
you know, five reps uh, in reserve on every set and, and come out looking like that just doesn't happen, you know. Mm. So, mm. Hey, um, I found this really cool uh, Instagram page on, I think I might have flicked it to you, Mike, but um, I'll bring it up. The artwork one, though. Yeah, yeah. So, the one that's heard mentioned on his podcast. Yeah, yeah. He put, he, like, I, I heard it, so I thought, oh, look, I'm going to go and have a look at this. And so the guy's name is Tyrannotaurus. And what he does is he does a whole lot of art about bodybuilders, but sort of changes the context and makes people see bodybuilders in a different way. And some of it's just really funny. Some of it's really cool. His graphic um, graphic design stuff is, is fantastic. Um, first thing I noticed is look at my company down here, followed by Blessing, Nate, and Rough Diesel. I'm in good company. <laughs> well, yeah, that worked. Anyway, um, if you have a look at his uh, page here, <laughs> oh look I haven't seen that one is uh Super Mario. who's that Paul so uh Paul let me get to grow a moustache and shave his head and they oh Paul was on <laughs> yeah so that, that uh let's see a quick quick squiz through here eh some some really good ones I, do, I quite like this one just because of the upcoming uh Thor versus Eddie boxing match yeah, and uh yeah. so they use the whole Game of Thrones yeah. theme so yeah clever concept eh clever concept yeah. um one of Guy Sistanino didn't he raging it Oh, yeah, that's good. And uh, Ian, uh, where's Guy? He's, yeah, so here's uh, Guy Cicerino raging at the two guys on the hack squat. So, um, yeah, I thought it was really cool. Um, just um, some really sort of offbeat sort of things. I had uh, James Hollingshead as a um, Peaky Blinder, which um, kind of kind of suited him, I thought. Uh, kind of looked the part with that beard. I thought he could have been probably... Uh, you know, Alfie Solomons, um, if you've ever watched that. I haven't watched Peaky Blinders. Uh, it's, it's essential prep viewing. <laughs> essential yeah. prep. Oh, like oh, 100%, man. If anyone, I'm starting prep in a few weeks, and I'm looking for something new to watch. I just... Oh, look, think... It's 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 just like a gangster movie in, in period setting in, in um, Birmingham in England, and... Um, it's got some incredible, you know, political stuff in there and some, you know, historic factual things interwoven with the story. And it's, um, yeah, she's good I was watching. I watching uh, two or three old episodes of the original Star Trek last night. The Captain Kirk one with, uh, yeah, it was hilarious. hilarious. Uh, Shan, Shan B, um, he's, a, he's, a, he's a tricky as well. He's a Star Wars man as well, but he, um, he'll, he'll enjoy hearing that. Um what was the other thing that we were sort of uh, touching on? Um, prep, um, two or three weeks. So your how, how long is your prep looking like it's going to be for your first show? Pretty short, isn't uh, it? Oh, well, I sort of, I'm, I was, I'm aiming 14 weeks for NABA Nationals. Yep. And partway through that, I'm going to uh, use Dunedin to qualify. That's only eight weeks in. Okay. So being that I'm <laughs> over 50s, yeah. I look at, you know, yeah. placing top three and over 50s yeah. uh, at a regional show, you know, shouldn't be too so challenging. Purely, purely using it as a qualifier. Yeah. No. I mean, look, I'm not going to push it harder to try and be in good shape in eight weeks. Yeah. Um, but I just didn't want to try and get in really good shape for that and then hold it for six weeks and then probably another two for, um, yeah. for Tournament of Champions. Yeah. So I figured, yeah, I'll just go to qualify. I mean, I don't like the idea of turning up to my hometown show looking <laughs> a bit rubbish, but you know, it could be pretty large still. So, so. Uh, are you uh, are you going to do a 15 second routine? Front yeah. double, front double bicep, most muscular, walk to the other side of the stage, most muscular, out the fucking door. Go on. Um, I've got to put a pay a bit more attention to my posing and my routine this year because yes. I, I didn't last year and, and it did look pretty shabby because you, you know, when I was, you can when have I was a, up on stage. You're going to have a crack at the uh, classic class at Tournament of Champions, right? Yeah. 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 So you, you, got to, you got to be down. Your posing's got to be down, eh? Yeah, I don't mind so much the classic poses. I just, I guess it's, um, my lat spread is terrible because of my separated do, shoulder. Um, do, do they do they do a front lat I spread? I don't do a lat spread for classic, so that kind of fits nicely. I'm in, um, I'm in. I can't do one. <laughs> I can't really spread my scapulas properly, yeah, um, yeah. so I need I need some tissue work and I need some stretching and I need to sort of get some practicing. But it was it was really the stamina. I hadn't done the work because yeah. you know last year it was like, oh, am I going to compete or not? Will I? Won't I? And that just didn't make me completely committed to 
to my posing practice. And so I was up on stage and I was shaking around and, you know, so <laughs> uh, fun just, stuff. Just more time for fishing, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. And with more time on it this year. Oh, cool, cool. Um, thoughts about music, because I've, I've got a few dilemmas. So firstly, have you, have you decided on your music or have you got a certain genre you're going to go for? Well, you know I me, mean? I like the, um, I like the smooth kind of, uh, you know, smooth, oh, what's the right way to put it? Not so much R&B, you know, yeah, something like that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I, I really like that stuff, bro. I really like that stuff. And I think it definitely suits your physique. Um, you know, well. You know. Before I separated my AC joint and broke some ribs and, yeah, you know, all that yeah. sort of thing. So I'll try and get that back. But you uh, still, like, even, I, you know, I look at, there's a, a photo of you doing a, what pose are you doing? Can't remember. Um, probably my side chest it's the only decent one I've got now yeah no there was that pose that, but there was another one because you did a quite a good nice uh, most muscular I really liked as well but there was another photo I looked at and I thought fuck you you've got that classic look you know you might be 50 but you've got that classic look buddy well if it was around when I was you know 30 yeah. then I might have carried on bodybuilding but um, I sent you that uh, I sent it uh, I need to edit it down but uh, Diana Ross I want muscle yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so maybe something like that I don't know I'm lost, man. I need some help on this one. So anyone's got any suggestions? Um, I've gone through so many phases. So originally I had this really kind of cool David Bowie song and I thought, you know, a bit of a tribute to Bowie because, I, you know, I think he's an amazing artist, but it's really punchy as well and it's got a sort of slow, punchy bit and then a really fast kind of frantic sort of bit that you'd finish on. And then um, I started watching Kevin Leverone. I just love Kevin Leverone's posing and... Um, they're playing a lot of sort of Creed and stuff like that. So I found a, a really smooth song of that sort of genre. And I thought, fuck, this is it. I'm definitely using this one. And, and then uh, I kind of thought a bit about, fuck, I haven't seen anyone pose to a really good drum and bass track. So I was like, fuck, you know, I've got some boys out there, maybe P Diggs or someone might uh, do me a favor and, and mix me up a really cool um, bit, of, bit of drum and bass. And then I kind of got just on you know, the old um, YouTube music and it just chooses music as it picks through stuff and some fucking uh, like 90s glam rock came on and I went I want to do this <laughs> and I want to do a real punchy kind of um, sort of high energy sort of routine because I've never done one before you know I've always yeah. done the nice slow smooth transition then I put it you know but I thought if I found a cool piece of music like that then maybe I'll do it and I thought um, you know I've got someone that can choreograph do choreography for me um, and work on some of my transitions as well as if there's more sort of dance elements to it. I mean, I'm not going to come out of Melvin and Anthony on you guys or anything like that, but, um, you know, if there's some, some cool sort of bits in there, then that might be quite cool to learn. And I find that stuff kind of difficult. Um, like when I did couples and I got, did I tell you how I got roped into couples? Yeah, yeah, you did. So I had a couple of drinks and then Lyris is used to do couples. No, nah, no, nah, I had a couple more drinks. Come on, we should do couples. Yeah, okay, sounds like a cool idea. And I turned up and she had a choreographer, and I had to like dip her and spin her and all these things, and I was shit scared I was going to drop her. Um, but it was quite cool learning all the dance sets. But man, it was really hard, particularly when you were depleted, because we were a couple of weeks out, and I'm trying yeah. to learn this, and I can't. You know, my brain's just, just mush. And uh, so, yeah, I think maybe I'll get a choreographer, but haven't decided on the music. Um, possibly something that's more kind of punchy or upbeat, but um, I'm open, you know, if there's a nice yes. cool classical track or, or an old school kind of techno track, maybe, the, you know, bring back so, the 8s. So uh, how far out are you? When do you start? Have you started uh, started cutting it or what's the... Tomorrow. So I got my, oh, yeah. yeah, my new new diet just come through today. You start on a Thursday? Yeah, man, we start when we start around here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh no so my chicken was um was wednesday and um pretty much everything was um you know where it had been recovery um sleep all those things um were pretty good man pretty good considering um we've been pushing a lot of carbs uh i was starting to get really sick of the rice um uh, but you know i just pushed my way through it and i I didn't shortcut any meals, which was kind of cool because there were times that I looked at that food and I went, I can't do it. I just, there's no way I can finish this. And then I thought, oh, if I don't finish it, I've got to tell my coach I didn't finish it and I failed. No, I've got to do it. So I forced it down. It might take 20 minutes with a litre of water to get the rice down. But um, we did it and we, 
you know, we've made some good gains. My body weight, though, has been slowly, very slowly, we're talking 0.2 grams a week, um, tracking downwards, um, which, you know, when you're in a bulk, you kind of think, what's going on there? You know, we're we eating enough, but I couldn't force more food than what I was doing unless I did it every, day, every, every day. Um, sorry, what was that? Couldn't fit more clean food. No, no. And we already had oils in there, so, you know, um, but when I looked at my progress photos and things, you know, the muscles definitely come up and some muscle groups have come up significantly. Others I've still got a lot more work on, um, but we're intending on still keeping that sort of growing for the next, you know, hopefully five weeks, we'll still get some good growth. We've kept really high carbs on uh, leg day still because leg's obviously a focus for me. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited, start tomorrow. Not major changes, you know, we've just whipped a few carbs out here and there. And um, well, you're so lean anyway, you, you know, you don't need to do anything drastic, do you? Yeah, I don't know if I'd say I was so lean, but um, certainly I'm leaner than I was at the any other prep you've ever done. Well, <laughs> even even at the lowest point of that recomp, when I was sitting at 94 kilos, I'm certainly leaner at 98 and a half to you know, my weight ranges between sort of 98, eight and, and, you know, 97, nine, somewhere around there. But I'm leaner than I was at, at 94, which is really cool. Um, yeah. So I don't know what I am, you know, somewhere between 10 and 12%, I would imagine, um, you know, possibly more, because my back seems to hold a bit of fat and you don't really see that when you look in the mirrors. I'm just remembering that. Um, so yeah, so it's going to be a good, good time. 17 weeks, so 17 weeks, find some music, practice some posing, do a bit more cardio, cut a few more carbs, and then we're there, you know? Uh, and so all those people that kind of, you know, say, I don't know how you guys do it when you get on stage. I just told you, cut some carbs, do a bit of cardio, you know? We count down the days and think, fuck, in another, in another 12 weeks, it's going to get really hard. And then after four weeks, I'm going to see the light and the ends in sight, and then I'm going to finish, and then I'm going to get fat again. So, you know, it's... Ish. You won't get too fat. No, I won't. I won't ever. I won't ever uh, let myself get you know anywhere near what I was. And I'd be quite happy to be honest if I could sort of sit around that twelve percent mark year round. Yeah, you know, that'd, that'd be a nice, comfortable, comfortable weight, and uh, might go a bit better on a skateboard than I than I do when I'm you know up in the thirty percent fat range. Yeah, depends how much you have to push the size, you know, and, and you're not really doing that at this stage, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, at, at my age, you know, how much, how big can I get, and how big would I want to get from a from a uh, health perspective? Um, a fair bit bigger than I am now, but um, <laughs> and you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm realistic about it, um, but you know, oh, pretty happy. This enough. isn't about being realistic, man. Otherwise, I'd still be a long distance road cyclist. I'm also an incredible liar. <laughs> no i've got an idea of what i want to look like um it's it, it's not what i had wanted to look like um you know so i've reframed it a bit um and really that's it's not because i haven't succeeded because i've succeeded you know to uh, you know a complete transformation really but um time wasn't on my side and i, I probably need another year to achieve the physique that I that I had intended putting up on stage. So if I can get, you know, within within ninety percent of, of what that original goal was, I'll be pretty happy. You know, I'll, I think yeah. I think everybody everybody always steps on stage showing the progress they've made so far. Mm. You know, even Mr. Olympia is looking for a few areas to improve on. You know, so it's I don't think uh, I've said this to a few people who kind of get apprehensive about getting up on stage. No one stands up there. I, I don't think. Uh, anybody stands up there and goes, this is what I've always dreamed of looking at. Look upon me and see perfection. This is what you know. They're not doing that. They're no. kind of going, you know, this is what I've done so far. But you don't need to be embarrassed or ashamed of that. You just get up there and show what you've done so far. And generally, it's sort of if you can be better each time you get up. Um, and that's sort of what keeps me in the game because I feel like I can still keep getting better. Yeah. Um, I wish I was this discipline and knew this, knew what I knew now back then because uh, I would have been a hell of a lot better but um, I've you know just deal with the charge you're in your hand right now absolutely so. that's a real interesting point and like I think most people would 
you know, think about when you're having that conversation about uh, a relatively new competitor getting up there and perhaps not being lean enough or, or you know, whatever. But, you know, for that individual, from where they've come, that's a, a pretty massive achievement. Now, the same conversation is going on in the heads of the guys that we look up to as the best in the sport. When they're standing on stage, they're like, yep, this is pretty good and we've come in well, we've nailed it, but, you know, I still need a bit more size through my lower lats or my hamstrings or whatever it might be, you know, and so there's still that same conversation that never changes. It's, I like to use the phrase, happy but not satisfied. Yeah, exactly. So you can be happy with what you've achieved, but that doesn't mean you have to be satisfied with it. You can keep pushing for more. So be happy but not satisfied. That's perhaps one of the best bits of advice I think I've, um, we've ever had on the show, Mike. So yeah. come up with the odd gem now, you know. Yeah. I do have to spit, I do have to spit a lot of shit for you to get the odd gem. <laughs> hey, uh, current events. I, I, I don't know why, man. I read the newspaper and I wonder why. But um, you had to go and quickly delete the anom app. What, what's the anom app? Did you not see that one? So oh, I saw it. I saw it, and I thought, yes. I, I honestly, my thoughts about that was, shh, this was always going to happen. Yeah. You know, perfect. I mean, and you know what a crazy bit of investigative kind of uh, work to go. Let's create an app. And, and sell it off to, you know, to criminal organisations and on the belief that it's, you know, encrypted. And it was fully encrypted, except that the keys for the encryption were with the creators who were the FBI. Um, so pretty pretty mind-boggling sort of a story. Um, but, yeah, yeah, so there'll be um, yeah, a lot of fallout from that, I would imagine. But um, might change the way people look at their digital communication, Mike. Yeah. Mm. Um, I did see in Auckland and Mangere there's been a been a hit and run. So look, um, condolences to anyone, you know, family and things that are you know been caught up in that or you know people there. But the interesting bit in the headline was um, it said hit and run in Mangere and 30 people in handcuffs. And I thought, hmm, you know, generally only life is that what you said? No, like, yeah, well, there's that. But but I'm thinking. Yeah. You know, only one person could have driven that car, and surely, it, even if the other twenty-nine were just witnesses to the event, why have they had to handcuff them all? It just seems very bizarre that they've got thirty people face down, handcuffed um, over over a hit and run event. So I don't know. Obviously, more to that story. So um, we'll see what happens. Um, There's another headline: was Polynesians first to discover Antarctica not news to Māori. And I laughed my ass off. I was like, oh, that's so good. It's like, of course they knew about Antarctica. They were down in this part of the world. Look, the Polynesian people are amazing navigators. They've travelled the seas for thousands of years. Why wouldn't they know about Antarctica before, you know, <laughs> you know colonial explorers came down all the way from uh, their part of the world to discover Antarctica. So uh, I thought it was a great headline. Um, Polynesians first to discover Antarctica, not used to Māori. So well done, New Zealand Māori um, and Polynesians for uh, coming across Antarctica first. Um, the other one, I think it's down your end of the country, it was the headline was Riders on Twin Coast um, Chased by Dog Pack. And I thought... Do we have wild dog packs running around in New Zealand? It kind of didn't kind of add up to me. What's going on there? It wasn't the wolf the wolf pack? It's uh, wolf pack powerlifting. Those boys went. Yeah, those boys were chasing uh, chasing people down, were they? Wow, well, I don't know, man. No, old barbender and beast builder and uh, co. They don't look like they could chase people for too long. You know, they probably throw a forty-five pound plate and hit someone pretty quickly, but. Uh, I don't know if the super heavy powerlifters are going to be uh, running around chasing people on bikes. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm not sure what's going on down your way. No, I've got to catch this bike. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, so what else for the rest of the week? What's happening? Anything exciting? I haven't been to work this week, so I'm, uh, I'm going to have my first day of work tomorrow. Yeah, I, I got a, um, I got an infection in my leg. I got a wee yep. nick, a uh, wee cut down the bottom of my shin. Yep. And uh, got infected and. Uh, I, uh, I had this mate down on the weekend and we went to watch the rugby and 
and had a couple of bourbons afterwards and I woke up in the morning and just went, oh, fuck, I've got a, I've got a terrible hangover. Yeah. And it lasted all day. And when it lasted to the next day, I went, oh, this ain't a hangover. Not a hangover. And then my lymph nodes were up. And so, so yeah, infection in my leg. And so I phoned up the doc and got some antibiotics and um, only ate twice on only ate twice on Sunday. One of those was a double down burger. I managed to get up to sort of four meals on on yeah. on Monday and sort of five or six yesterday and back up to sort of six, seven meals today. So I'm sort of back, but I've lost you know, a kilo and a half or something. You know, it's only water. It's only water. I've been to the gym since last Friday. So um, I did some cardio Saturday morning. So you haven't, uh, but I, I keep having to tell myself, you know, a week off's not the end of the world. That kilo and a half is only water. It's yeah. all good. It's all good. But I'm gonna I'm gonna head back to work tomorrow. I'm gonna get back in the gym on Friday. Get my get my eating right. Get back on track. It'll bounce back pretty easily. But uh, yeah, I'm theoretically still in about the last. But we've got another five six weeks of bulking. So uh, yeah, I don't like seeing the scales go down either. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, hey, look, uh, all the best uh, getting back to school and. Uh, with the, with the uh, training, get back into training. Um, we have to catch up once you're back in the gym. Yeah, and, uh, yeah man. Yeah, it's the important thing. Hundred percent. I tell people, you know, you know that it's serious because I haven't been to the gym since Friday. <laughs> uh, yeah, and if, you know, I've got this annoying little thing called work that gets in the way of me going to the gym in the morning and cardio and then gym at night and living the dream. <laughs> but hey, we've got to we've got to pay the bills. It doesn't happen by mistake. Right. So, yeah. Right, guys, uh, it's probably about enough of us tonight. Uh, not too much on bodybuilding, but uh, lots of random stuff. But we hope you all have had a, a good week so far and have a safe uh, week running into the weekend and get yourselves in the gym and be productive. From me, it's a good night. Thanks, Tom.